Curtis Francis Warren, also known as Cocky, was born May 31st, 1963. A convicted drug trafficker, he was formerly Interpol's Target One and was once listed on the Sunday Times Rich List. After 14 years in jail, it has been announced the former Liverpool drug lord will be released from prison. Warren, who at one point was estimated to have amassed a fortune of £300 million, was jailed for 13 years in 2009 over a plot to smuggle £1 million worth of cannabis into Jersey. He's made a lot of money out of it and uh, established a lot of links with other organised crime groups around the world. He's a big player. With the announcement that Warren is set to be freed, this video takes a look back at how he ended up in maximum security prison. In January 1993, Warren was a defendant in a complex drugs trial at Newcastle Crown Court alongside his close associate, Brian Charrington. But the trial famously collapsed and Warren walked away. Although Warren disputes it, he was reported to have ventured back into the court, approached customs officers and said, I'm off to spend my 87 million from the first shipment and you can't f***ing touch me. In the middle of the 1990s, there was a major fallout between two rival South Liverpool factions. The fatal shooting of a businessman sparked the gang war, which resulted in scores of shootings across the city. Warren was said to have become involved in the fallout through his friendship with a man called Johnny Phillips. Mr Phillips, who survived an attempt on his life, later died of a heart attack. Warren was naturally concerned by the ferocity of the gang war and increased police activity in the south end of the city. It is thought the South Liverpool gang war encouraged Warren to relocate to Holland. Warren, now in his 30s, actually moved to the sleepy village of Sassenheim, deep in the Dutch countryside. The Toxteth crook and his colleagues moved into a farmhouse called Bacara and assumed they had evaded the scrutiny of the police. Meanwhile, officials in the UK and Holland joined forces to smash Warren's drugs business. An elite police unit later stormed the farmhouse where they seized MDMA, 1,000 kilograms of cannabis, guns, three hand grenades and 940 canisters of CS gas. Warren was convicted of trying to mastermind a £125 million drug shipment from the Netherlands into the UK and sentenced to 12 years in prison. Warren later moved to the formidable Nayev Osserfeld Maximum Security Jail when it emerged he had become involved in a violent attack. Turkish prisoner Samel Gukulu is said to have screamed abuse at Warren. Gukulu then began throwing punches, but Warren pushed him away. But when Gukulu came back at Warren, the Liverpool man is said to have kicked him in the head. Gukulu, a convicted killer, died from his injuries. Warren, who claimed to have acted in self-defence, was jailed for a further four years. In the summer of 2007, Warren was released from custody in Holland and put on a ferry back to Liverpool. But within weeks of his release, Warren flew out to Jersey, where he became implicated in a £1 million cannabis plot. After a three-week trial, a jury found Warren and his associates guilty. The Liverpool man was then flown off the island and sent straight to HMP Belmarsh, one of the UK's most secure prisons. As the judge handed him a 13-year sentence, Warren simply closed the book he had been reading for much of the proceedings and walked out with prison guards behind him. In 2011, the authorities accidentally moved one of Warren's sworn enemies into the same prison as him. John Haas from Everton was moved into HMP Long Larton despite the presence of Warren. Haas, serving a life sentence for an unprecedented plot to pervert the course of justice, was no friend of Warren. Once the authorities realised the potential for trouble, it is understood Warren was moved north to Full Sutton, a 600 capacity prison with a reputation for holding some of the country's most violent and dangerous offenders. In 2013, Warren, still behind bars, faced another threat to his liberty after prosecutors claimed he was in control of a £198 million drugs empire. In an astonishing 38 page opening to the three week trial, Prosecutors claim Warren could source cocaine from South America, heroin from Turkey and cannabis from Morocco, with his drug markets diverse and including Liverpool, Brazil, Moscow, Swaziland and Australia. 
Warren boasted while behind bars in Holland of laundering up to £15 million cash each week obtained from worldwide drug trafficking. Dutch financial investigators in 1996 estimated Warren made the drugs profit of £12 million in a three-month period. But those figures failed to take into account multi-million pound heroin and cannabis jobs or cocaine trafficking. Warren, who claimed to be penniless, was ordered by the court to serve another 10 years in prison after he refused to pay the order. During his stay at HMP Franklin near Durham, Warren had an affair with a prison officer, Stephanie Smith-White. Miss Smith-White pleaded guilty to two counts of misconduct in a public office at Durham Crown Court during a brief hearing. The court heard Smith-White became obsessed with Warren and was soon indulging in secret sex and kissing sessions in his cell. The 40-year-old who sent him a photo of herself wearing a cat suit also bedded the career criminal in the kitchen and laundry room. The steamy affair lasted for six months between June and December 2018 as Smith-White became so besotted she got a tattoo of his name on her body next to a rose. Drugs baron Curtis Warren is being prepared for release after 14 years in jail but will face strict conditions. He will not be allowed any assets worth more than £1,000 despite allegedly having £198 million squirrelled away. He will be hit with a string of other curbs on his lifestyle under a serious crime prevention order including foreign travel and his use of the internet, phones and vehicles.